Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Program, episode 4 of our SSTO Space Program, a series where we try to lower the costs of space exploration by using SSTOs or going fully reusable. And today we have a lot of changes to talk about. I received a lot of feedback from you regarding the mods we should add and I thank you for your input very much. It's great to know that you guys enjoy this series and would like to see some additions to it. I've added a lot of mods to our install, but the most important ones are probably MKS and life support from Roverdude. We also have Outer Planets installed, as you can see. Full list of mods is in the description, and I won't go through all of them now, but rather when we stumble upon something that is modified by a particular mod, we'll talk about that. That being said, we have big plans for today. Our space program is expanding and we will be unlocking proper SSTO related technologies today. Oh, and um, I also blew up Minmus. Well, maybe not, but we will be sending a manned mission to Minmus that will land in every single biome. But before we can do that, we need to unlock some key technologies that we are still missing. We also need to get more money and get more reliable SSTO launch vehicles and for that I've picked a bunch of contracts that require some low altitude readings on the other side of Kerbin. Last time we've brought enough science to unlock the mainsail engine and it's going to be our workhorse for all the new SSTO launch vehicles for today. Also we need to solve the re-entry problem for probes and find a way to deal with plasma blackout. I decided to use a small drone plane to perform some tests in this regard. Since we need to get to the other side of Kerbin, I figured the easiest way to do that would be to send a small probe into orbit using an SSTO, deorbit it later and fly around where we need it. The main goal here, uh, apart from getting the money obviously, is to test the re-entry for the probe. We can't control it during the plasma blackout, so if something would be going wrong we can't react. The um, launch vehicle is still manned by, I think, Valentina. This rocket can bring around 7 tons into a prograde orbit, but here our payload is smaller as we launched into a polar orbit. The probe separated and now we just have to wait for proper alignment to deorbit both our probe and our rocket. I am worried if I packed enough snacks for Val here. After a little bit of waiting our probe is well aligned with the waypoint, so it's time to deorbit it and test for re-entry. It worked really well and I was able to re-enter close to the waypoint, take all the readings that were required and safely land the probe using some parachutes. The probe proved that we can deal with the plasma blackout problem, now we just need to build a probe version of our SSTO rocket and test it. The launch vehicle has been improved and is no longer dangerously close to overheating, but still has some stability issues. I think we need bigger fins to fight off the body lift that is for some reason much stronger in the upper parts of the atmosphere than the regular lift is. I sent a similar mission using a design inspired by a dream chaser to see if adding larger fins will make the launch vehicle more stable upon re-entry. Also we were getting low altitude contracts on the other side of Kerbin constantly now. My Dream Chaser design wasn't most reliable, but the launch vehicle worked even better and I think that now we can further improve it and actually land it back at the KSC. It also means that we can start using probe cores instead of command pods, further increasing the cargo capacity. With all the extra money that we've made, we can now upgrade the space plane hangar to level 3, effectively removing all the limits on our vessels. There are two more problems that we need to solve before we can send our Minmus mission though. First is communication. As you remember, our comm network was pretty useless because I used wrong antennas, but apparently OPM changes the ranges and now those antennas are working pretty well. This, however, felt too much like cheating to me, so I decided to unlock better antennas first, ones that can reach Minmus regardless of OPM installed or not. To do that, we need more science. Since the only reliable ship we have that can reach Moon or Minmus is our Moon Shuttle, I decided to improve its launch vehicle and send it to the moon yet again. This also allowed me to get more used to the life support mod on a shorter trip before going to Minmus. Second problem that we have is uh, that we actually need to know in advance where all the biomes on Minmus are and for that we need to send a scanning satellite beforehand and perform a complete surface scan of this small body. But as you probably have guessed we have no related technologies unlocked yet. We are also missing more advanced solar panels to power the satellite and last but not least we need to unlock nuclear engines for our spacecraft. After getting back from the moon we had over 660 science points to spend 
and could unlock nuclear propulsion, precise engineering for antennas and advanced electrics for solar panels. With those problems out of the way now, we can move to our main mission. First, we'll be sending a science satellite equipped with every single piece of scanning equipment I had access to. We are using ScanSat and MKS parts on this satellite and it can perform radar and biome scans on the surface as well as some limited orbital resource survey. I wanted it to look nice as well, so I hid the fuel tank inside a box made of wing parts and put the science equipment on them. I hope it turned out looking good, but it's for you guys to judge. It certainly made it unstable in the atmosphere. I have also decided that I will try to stick to stock parts for my ships as much as possible, apart from colony parts obviously and some other parts that will be required for the mods to function. Uh, I won't be using any mod related engines or fuel tanks unless it's absolutely necessary. The reason behind this is that I want you guys to be able to use my crafts for your missions if you so desire, regardless of whether you play with mods or not. As you can see here, our satellite is in orbit now and it's time to deorbit our launch vehicle. Hopefully, with everything we've learned today, it will work flawlessly. This design has proven to work really well and I was actually very surprised how stable it was during re-entry. I was able to fly it back to the KSC and land in front of the VAB, which made me feel like a Kerbal version of Elon Musk for a second there. Finally, something worked as intended. The satellite has enough delta V to get to Minmus and enter polar orbit around it with some extra margin. It will also provide us with some realistic information about time of flight, so we can estimate how much supplies our manned mission would need. Upon arrival to Minmus, we need to execute an insertion burn obviously, and I've ensured that we are coming on the correct trajectory. With the ant engine it was quite a long burn actually, but I think this satellite doesn't need a more powerful one. Once we were placed in a nice circular polar orbit with a periapsis of 260 km, numerous scanning antennas, sensors and whatnot were activated and the satellite started collecting data about the surface. Now is the time to send our manned mission to Minmus. Our ship for this mission is a nuclear powered spacecraft that has over 4500 meters per second delta V and is going to be delivered into orbit using an upscaled version of our most recent SSTO launch vehicle. The ship has room for six crewmen, but we'll be taking only our four orange suits this time. There are two main reasons for this. First, Kerbals now need living space, and the more unoccupied living space there is, the longer they can stay in space without having any trouble, so having those two extra seats helps a great deal. Also, not all crew cabins are equal in terms of comfort and it looks like the Hitchhiker's Khan is one of the best we have access to right now. Second, they need supplies. A large tank of supplies that I'm carrying with me right now can sustain four Kerbals with extra waste recyclers you see on the sides for about 40 days. With six Kerbals, that time drops to about 26 days. A one-way trip to Minmus is about two weeks, so our Kerbals will be staying away from home for approximately one month if everything goes right. I therefore decided to take only four to have those extra couple of days if we ever need them. There is one more thing actually, orange suited Kerbals don't quit their duties even if they run out of supplies or hub space. They will complain, but still continue to work. So in the worst case scenario at least we'll be able to get them back to Kerbin safely. Re-entering our new launch vehicle here was surprisingly easy, and even if it doesn't fly as great as its smaller cousin, it is a very successful design. I was able to fly it back to KC and land in the ocean nearby. Back to our ship in orbit, our crew is now ready to leave Kerbin. We have a very decent thrust to weight ratio on this ship, so we can execute the transfer burn in one go, even with nuclear engines. I have big expectations from this mission and to maximize our science gain I am using a mod called Science Here and Now that is basically letting me know if there is a new experiment available. Very useful tool and I highly recommend it. Since I launched in a zero inclination orbit I tried to achieve minimus capture while it was crossing its plane of inclination and a small correction burn was needed during our transfer. I've installed a larger antenna on this ship so we can send some of the science data back to the KSC directly. Crew and EVA reports do not lose their value when transmitted, so I will be sending those. We also have a mod called Science Relay that allows sending science data between the vessels without the need of having a Kerbal to manually transfer them. 
I haven't tested it yet, but I can already think of a great recon mission where a ground crew communicates with a mother ship in orbit. Maybe Duna or maybe Eve, you guys decide. As you can see here, our scanning satellite did a pretty good job and we already have a lot of information about the biome layout of Minmus. Now we know exactly where we need to go to visit all of them. This is our first mission to Minmus and we're collecting science both from far away and up close. I've packed every single science equipment we have access to on this ship, so our poor Bob will be doing many spacewalks today resetting all those goo containers and material base. I really need to think about a better way of doing this in the future. With orbital readings taken, it's time to land on the surface. It doesn't really matter where we land, since we are going to land everywhere today. Adjust the orbit of the ship, Minmus is so small and we have so much fuel that it should not matter anyway. X-Science is cancelling time warp every time situation changes, even if there are no new experiments available. That was only happening when X-Science window was open, something to keep in mind if you're going to play with this mod yourself. And we've landed! Our first location was Midlands, and immediately after touchdown X-Science window lit up like a Christmas tree. Look at all that science we're getting, and it's just the beginning. I sent Jeb to plant a flag to mark our historical landing on the surface of Minmus, and we were ready to get to another location. Using a biome map provided by our scanning satellite, I can plan our trip to visit neighboring biomes with least fuel spent. It also has a smaller map that you can see both in flight mode and in your ship's cockpit if you have raster prop monitor installed. Great for immersive flying. Highlands and lowlands were just up north of where we landed, so I decided to head there first. This hopping method wasn't maybe as efficient as roving for example, but it's much faster. Plus, driving on a low gravity world as Minmus is difficult and I end up flying and tumbling all over the place. We repeated this process many times and from highlands we went to lowlands, then to flats, slopes, lesser flats, poles and finally to great flats. I hope I didn't miss any biome though. Having this small scansat map was very helpful and I don't think I could have done this as efficiently without it. It also looks awesome, especially from inside the cockpit. Our team was collecting science and planting flags every time we landed, otherwise I would not be able to keep track of where we've been already. The whole process was quite repetitive and took some time to finish. There was an adrenaline spike when I realized that my, or should I blame Jeb for that, reckless flying around the poles left us with very little fuel and I was worried for a second that we might not have enough to get back home. Our last landing spot was Great Flats and from there I launched the ship back into orbit. It turned out we had just enough fuel to get back into orbit and inject our spacecraft into an inclined return trajectory to Kerbin. Not an ideal transfer, but I was happy we made it anyway. However, our troubles were not over yet, as I was about to find out. After reaching the escape velocity from Minmus orbit, I checked our supplies and I was happy to find that we had enough to sustain our kerbals for another 26 days. Everything looked good at this point. We reached Kerbin and narrow braked a couple of times to reduce the speed. The ship has large wings and some canards, but no landing gear. It was quite stable and narrow braking was easy. Actually, much easier than with the Moon Shuttle, which looks more like a proper space plane. And after the second aero brake, I noticed that all of our supplies are gone. Kerbals can go without them for about 14 days, but it wasn't a good sign. I have no idea what happened. Maybe the recyclers were off due to the power shortage, or maybe we went we spent more time aero braking than I thought. Something to watch out for next time, especially for longer missions. Getting to another planet will be interesting for sure. During the third and final aero break, Bill repeatedly refused to work. He changed his mind a couple of times, because he is our top engineer and it takes more than just a snack shortage to remove him from his post. He was the only one to crack, however. Nevertheless, we have managed to re-enter relatively gracefully and quite close to the KSC. The ship flies well in the lower parts of the atmosphere and after getting as close as I could to KSC I deployed the parachutes and landed on the ground. We brought from Minmus over 3700 science and have now almost 4000 unspent science points. It also looks like the water level in Kerbin rose quite a bit. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and if you did please consider liking and commenting this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider doing so. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Cheers!